welcome back to our last discussion of the day. Um, for our last presentation, I will introduce you to Dr. Bakri El Sheikh, our MDA Care Center Director for The Ohio State University. He is also the Professor of Neurology and Director of the Neuromuscular Medicine Fellowship at The Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center. I will hand it over to you, Dr. Al Sheikh, to present on management of SMA. Um, it is a pleasure having you here today. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's my turn now. I'll be talking about the role of multidisciplinary care in SMA, and I will have uh, a main focus on about the uh, SMA. So uh, here are my disclosures. Um, some of those are relevant in terms of advisory boards as well as uh, uh, grant and the support from Biogen, Genentech, and uh, US. So I will be uh, talking about uh, SMA in the uh, about uh, population, and I will start with the brief overview of the phenotype and the uh, natural history. And thereafter, I will highlight the role of the multidisciplinary care in providing optimal management. And I'll be looking at really the big picture and uh, more of an overview of the different aspects of, of care. And, and that way, we can put it all uh, uh, together. So as you, as you heard earlier uh, today from several of the uh, speakers, uh, SMA uh, results from deficiency of the survival motor neuron protein. And uh, that is caused by deletion or mutation of the survival motor neuron gene or the SMN1 gene. Uh, but you also have to have retention of the SMN2 uh, gene at least one or more copies. And so uh, what the SMN2 uh, gene is what we refer to as a spare gene, and it does produce small amounts of around 10 to 15 percent of the uh, SMN protein or the fully functional uh, SMN protein. Uh, thus, the SMN2 copy uh, number is really considered the main determinant of the phenotype. And, and, and we heard earlier about all the different types in the uh, classic uh, classification from SMA type 1 all the way to SMA uh, type type four, and, and in general, uh, with the infants who have SMA type one is the most severe uh, type of uh, the uh, disease. They usually have two copies of the SMA two, whereas the uh, uh, children with SMA uh, type uh, two as well as adults will have around three copies of the SMA two uh, SMA two gene and. Uh, three to four copies in those with SMA type three, and for those with about onset ambulatory uh, uh, patients, they do have a uh, uh, four or more uh, SMA2 uh, copies. So what we see in the adult is a little bit uh, different, and, and so the, the, the phenotype in the adult clinic is really uh, variable. And, uh, but there are three distinct types, and those are based on the function at the time of evaluation. So we have the non-sitters, and uh, those are severe non-ambulatory phenotype, and they have severe weakness usually at the four extremities. Previously, they were classified as SMA type one or type two, and they tend to have uh, uh, involvement or weakness of the facial muscles, swallowing problems, as well as breathing, uh, uh, problems, they tend to have contracture, uh, several of the orthopedic complications, and they tend to be uh, uh, ventilator dependent or uh, uh, with tracheostomy as well. They, they might end by having recurrent hospitalizations because of uh, uh, aspiration, pneumonia, and other infections. On the other end of the spectrum, which really on this figure is, is C, is a milder phenotype, uh, and those are adults who are still able to walk independently. They're usually previously classified as SMA type three or four. Uh, they will have weakness that predominantly affect their proximal muscles, so it's a little difficult to get up from the floor or go up uh, um, steps. 
and sometimes the upper extremity can be involved and so difficulty reaching above the shoulder level. They usually do not have any swallowing or breathing uh, muscle involvement. And in between, there is a non-ambulatory uh, phenotype and as uh, labeled as, as B, and those usually have uh, weakness that's really more severe in the lower extremity compared to the uh, upper extremity with retention of strength in the distal arm and at the hand uh, um, level. So the second point uh, is really what is the natural cause of disease in adults with spinal muscular atrophy? The studies have shown that there is decline in strength and different measures of motor function over time. So the slope of decline will vary depending on the SMA type. So on the top uh, figure here, uh, this is a cross-sectional uh, study by uh, Wadman and Cobb, and, and that showed uh, it has 108 of those, and it's showing on the different colors the slope of decline based on the different disease processes. And so you have the SMA type 4, which is about onset, have lesser of the fever uh, uh, decline compared to those with SMA type 2 or SMA type uh, 3A. Uh, and the difference between the type 3A and 3B is really the age of onset of symptoms. Both reach the level of being able to work independently. However, uh, those with onset before the age of 3 are labeled to be uh, uh, type 3A. And so uh, overall, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, other, the, the, the figure in the middle is really from the study by Jackie Montez looking at the six minute walk test. And in the adults above the age of 80, there was an annual decline of around nine meters. Uh, also, uh, the last study looking at a measure of uh, Hammersmith's uh, functional motor scale, which is the measure of, of motor function, again showing different slopes of decline based on the SMA type, and this is mostly on those who are ambulatory. So all in all, there is progressive decline in all types of SMA, despite apparent plateau period that might look uh, for years, and so some might not know uh, a decline in their function for, for a few years before they could uh, see uh, that. So Moreover, when we come and compare uh, adults with SMA to age and sex match control, and this is using a computerized strength testing for the MDICP, we did find that there is, even on, on, on the SMA with the milder phenotype, uh, they tend to have significant weakness when you compare them to uh, normal, normal control. So all in all, these facts about the uh, progressive nature of the disease, regardless of the phenotype, will definitely argue for uh, importance of intervention, including in the adult patients with spinal muscular atrophy, and even stabilization of the strength and motor function over uh, time uh, is uh, uh, helpful. So I'm sure by now you, you, you memorize this figure, uh, I, but I'm, I'm showing it again uh, just to underscore two points. First is the pivotal role of the multidisciplinary care team in management of individuals with spinal muscular atrophy. And second is the aggressive, the need for aggressive supportive treatment. Uh, and that remains the cornerstone of all SMA treatment. So it's not only the drugs, it is the drugs with the uh, uh, standard of care for other uh, uh, areas or other complications related to spinal muscular atrophy. And, and as you've heard earlier, expertise from different specialties is needed uh, to be able to deliver, uh, to deliver an optimal care. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm including here on this picture some of my colleagues uh, who collaborate to provide care for adults with SMA in our OSU MDA uh, care center. You can see the different specialities that are uh, involved from uh, a nurse coordinator to uh, the nurse practitioners, the respiratory service, the physical service, the uh, genetic counselor, the social worker, the dietitian, and, and the clinical pharmacist, as well as the research staff. And so 
for the different aspects, you need expertise from others, in addition to collaborating with other uh, uh, physicians who are not necessarily available as well in the uh, clinic. So a team approach using a proactive care model with goals to monitor disease progression, maintain function and prevent complications, such as contractures and respiratory infection, try to prevent hospitalization, is, is, is really a corner uh, stone and it's really important aspect of the uh, management for, for, for SMA. And, and you've heard about several of those, and I'm not really going to go into the details, but uh, you've heard earlier from Natalie about the uh, rehab services, uh, and, and, and she covered all the physical therapy. There is also a role for the occupational service in helping you improve in motor functions and uh, uh, with assistive technology as well in terms of racing, robotics, and uh, wheelchair clinics, as well as uh, maximizing uh, uh, activities of daily uh, living. Speech and language pathology is also, role is really very important. Uh, as we know that uh, with, with particularly with the severe phenotype of the SMA, uh, swallowing uh, uh, problems are, are there in addition to uh, issues with articulation, voice and, and speech uh, and, and weakness of the uh, facial muscles. Uh, there is definitely a role for, for muscle exercises uh, there was one study that was done by Jackie Montes looking at strengthening anaerobic uh, exercise. And although uh, it did not show or improve uh, strength, it was proven to be safe and it did improve aerobic capacity. So exercise plans need to be individualized and supervised by physical therapists uh, who can help with uh, energy conversation, help you uh, to gauge how much exercise and which type of exercise to do. Uh, watch for things like fatigue, pain, uh, increased weakness, use your, use your body as your own uh, uh, clock to tell you uh, what, what you did is too much or what you, uh, or you can advance your exercise program uh, further. And, and most important in, in terms of exercise is really consistency and ability to incorporate that into part of your daily uh, routine. You've also heard earlier about the respiratory uh, care that's guided by, by pulmonologists and, and respiratory. And again, it's essential aspect of the care and it's uh, physical. Uh, and so uh, assessment, planning, intervention, decisions on uh, ventilation, decisions on uh, uh, critical care support are all uh, done uh, uh, with collaboration uh, with the uh, pulmonologist and the uh, respiratory service. Immunization is obviously also uh, uh, an important aspect of the of the of the care, and and, and not only the, the, the flu and, and the pneumonia vaccines, but also uh, now the COVID uh, vaccination. So, from a gastrointestinal point of view, uh, there is the, the the screening for for dysphagia, aspiration, uh, reflux, uh, as well as delayed entry and constipation, uh, assessment of the nutrition status. And, 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 and looking at weight, looking at obesity and, and bone health, as you've heard about that earlier, the importance of checking your vitamin D and, and making sure that it is really uh, optimal. And so, and interventions could be from, from, from uh, dietary changes in uh, and those for, for, for reflux disease, using medications to help with the uh, acid uh, reflux. As with any disease of the uh, muscles and, and, and all the neuromuscular disorders, uh, obesity or increase in weight would really increase the burden of, of care and, and results in, in, in functional uh, decline. Add to that, particularly in the adult patient population, the other uh, uh, medical problems and comorbidities that come with uh, obesity in higher risk of diabetes, higher risk of, of hypertension, uh, increased uh, issues related to pain at the uh, joint and the uh, hips and the, and, the, and the back. And so again, that's something to be kept in mind and, and looked, and looked uh, at. So constipation is really extraordinarily common in, in adult individuals with SMA. Uh, not really looked at very closely. There's, there are several gaps in knowledge 
with regard to the adults uh, with the spinal muscular atrophy. But this is something important to screen for and, and, and work on behavioral modification in terms of uh, fluid intake and movement and increase in terms of fiber proper uh, uh, seating and so on. And then uh, using a cascade of, of uh, uh, algorithm in terms of uh, medications to use to help with uh, uh, laxative, uh, starting with uh, bulk form and laxative and going into stool softeners and other osmotic and stimulants. And this can also be uh, helped or, or guided by the uh, primary care physician. Edema as well is really common, and particularly in the non-ambulatory adults with spinal muscular atrophy. It's usually tend to be dependent edema. You see the swelling on the feet, the ankles, and the legs. And this could be related to venous stasis because of immobility. Some of the medications uh, can be contributing to edema. So if somebody has pain and they are on, 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 on gabapentin or pregabalin or lyrica, those might contribute to, to, to edema. Uh, nutritional status, low albumin. And obviously, uh, uh, if, if, if the swelling is unilateral and there is pain with it, this is uh, uh, always a need to uh, uh, do a surveillance to ensure that there is no uh, deep vein uh, thrombosis or a leg, uh, a leg clog. And, and, and sometimes, if the edema is really significant and worse, uh, it is also important to ensure that there are no other systemic causes of the edema and that can occur because of, of, of heart or kidney or, or liver related uh, uh, problems. And, and obviously the edema can make the skin liable to uh, uh, ulceration and can increase the risk of, of, of infection and can make it difficult to wear uh, shoes and, and, and pants. It, does, it can be also at times uh, felt to be painful at the joint level as well as there are some uh, obvious cosmetic consequences. And, and it is treated usually either with elevation of the leg at night, using of compression stockings, so important to take care of the skin, salt diet, and sometimes uh, medications are used to decrease, uh, to decrease that. So uh, for particularly for the non-ambulatory patients, pressure ulcers are really uh, important to keep on, 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 on mind. And, so uh, proper positioning, turning technique, and, 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 and avoiding friction, uh, pressure redistribution, all of those should be uh, uh, kept in, in, in mind uh, to, 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 to minimize the risk of uh, skin, skin uh, ulceration. And, and, and again, so uh, add to that, there are certain situations if there is issues with perfusion, that's really important when somebody has low blood pressure or they do have any issues of with peripheral vascular disease. It's important to keep that in, in mind and provide even extra care uh, to the skin in those, uh, in those uh, situations. So, uh, so it's always important to keep uh, uh, the skin away from any, any moisture, particularly if somebody has issues with uh, incontinence and so always keeping the skin uh, dry is important, but really also not not extra dry, and so that you don't get cracks on the on the on the uh, on the skin. And so uh, and, and another important point is really uh, it's it's is to uh, stay vigilant in terms of looking at skin and and take good care of. Uh, wounds as they are starting. If there is any alteration at the skin uh, color, that should be uh, given an extra uh, uh, um, care. So uh, definitely, you 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 you've already heard from uh, Dr. Barbuto about the uh, pain in the spinal muscular atrophy. He gave a very comprehensive talk about that. So I won't discuss it any further than it's really important to highlight. Uh, to screen for that and, and to treat the uh, pain as appropriate. So um, the, the, uh, from, from, from the adult perspective, uh, there are several case reports of successful uh, pregnancies in women with uh, SMA. And, and it's important really at, at, to have a team uh, involved in, 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 in the care at that level, including a, a neurologist or, or 
from another risk of anxiety, which is familiar with SMA, high risk uh, with nutrition, with pharmacologists, and that uh, should, should allow uh, women to make a, an informed uh, uh, decision. Uh, there, were, there were studies mostly in case reports and small cities that showed that uterus has normal contractility and pelvis deformity might, might lead to uh, higher uh, need for uh, instrumental uh, delivery. And, 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 and so as well, there, there could be some technical challenges with, uh, for instance, the epidural anesthesia in, 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 uh, in some. A uh, few years ago, we've had a study that uh, looked at, uh, uh, was a questionnaire based study uh, that collected data from 72 females who uh, had uh, 35 pregnancies. And so we, uh, it was noted on that study that preterm labor and C-section are more common in the type two. Uh, there was also some increased weakness during the pregnancy. And that was actually shown by other studies uh, as well. And that uh, some of that weakness persisted after delivery in around 42% of, of, of uh, uh, those who responded uh, to the survey with history of pregnancy. But overall, the experience was really uh, a positive uh, experience. So uh, there was a study from Germany that included 70 adults uh, to evaluate for non-motor symptoms of spinal muscular atrophy comparing that with age and, and gender or sex match from uh, healthy controls. And so uh, one of the conclusion of that study that uh, uh, did, did, did show that uh, the, the, uh, there are a few items that are more uh, frequent than the control population, uh, including uh, here you could see the swallowing difficulties, uh, nocturia, uh, falling, and uh, uh, swelling of the lower extremities. So, so, so they, here is, you see that the edema is really more than the control. Interestingly, on this study that uh, the, the uh, neuropsychiatric uh, uh, complications were not more uh, frequent in the SMA compared to the uh, control. However, that's still an area uh, of unmet need uh, in terms of uh, mood disorder and psychological aspect of the uh, disease, and, and that require really further uh, studies. So the the um, it's I, I always say that uh, adult individuals are expected to have adult diseases, and so it's really important uh, to have established care with a family physician for. Uh, preventive care in the adults and regular health screen for 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 diabetes, high blood pressure, for 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 to treat other other medical conditions like like uh, migraine, uh, to screen for depression and anxiety, and to screen for cancer uh, that's age appropriate and and based on on, on individual risk. So. Um, the, the, the data, uh, you, you, you heard earlier from Catherine about the uh, treatment uh, for, for, for SMA. And, and, and there is limited data in the adults. Uh, the, the medications that are approved are high price medication. And so those added a little layer of complexity to the approval process and monitoring uh, of, of, of uh, individuals, with, adult individuals with SMA on uh, the new syllabus. So it's important to have a good understanding of the uh, process, including the need uh, for what's needed for reapproval. Uh, and, and those will require periodic evaluations and, and, and uh, to monitor uh, response to the treatment. So clinical genetic data is important, uh, PA and approval process, uh, baseline outcome measures, and then following therapy and following the procedures and, and, and uh, troubleshooting or addressing if there are any side effects to the uh, modification and then uh, monitor the uh, progress and to track the response to the uh, treatment. So uh, this is what we use as outcome measures at our institute. Uh, uh, and, 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 and as I said earlier, including in the standard of care document based on the uh, international uh, um, expert uh, consensus, uh, 
uh, document, uh, a lot of the management is really based on the function status, whether, whether someone is able to work independently or able to sit independently or they are not uh, sitter. So uh, there are uh, consensus overall in the tools that are used, and those are usually measures, different measures of strengths and motor function, as well as the uh, lung function. So the six minute walk, the Hammersmith, uh, the strength testing, whether uh, MVICT or handheld, uh, or uh, some of those patient reported outcome measures like the SMA FRS or the, MS, uh, the SMA uh, high uh, and the pulmonary function test. And then you also have uh, for the sitters, the Hammersmith, the revised abundant modules and, and the SMA FRS and, and so on. And so those are really important to keep to keep those in 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 mind and and uh, uh, as 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 outcome measures that needs to be uh, assessed periodically while someone is on uh, treatment. I again I, I I wouldn't dwell much about the the treatment. You've had um, just had a, a a great talk about the different forms of the uh, treatment. I'll just uh, highlight a few points with regard to the adult uh, patients. Um, and so, uh, as I said, you, you've heard about the clinical and the research pipeline of, of cirrhosis from Catherine uh, Meyer earlier. And so, you know that there were three medications uh, that are approved in the last uh, uh, three, uh, five years. And, and the first uh, two of those medications are approved for uh, the adults, and I will, I will highlight those. And all of those are really uh, SMN-based uh, therapies. So you've heard about the nutrinursing. Uh, it is given intracetally because it does not cross the blood-brain barrier. Uh, it does uh, work on uh, increasing the inclusion of the uh, missing exon on the SMN2. So it's basically working to make that, that copy gene work better. And so uh, it's given as four loading doses, and thereafter you get uh, a maintenance injection every four uh, months. It was approved in Christmas of 2016 for all SMA uh, types. So uh, most of the uh, original data was in the infants and, and, and children to the age of 12. However, subsequently there was some real world data in the adults. And, and the side effects that we usually monitor for are uh, uh, before every injection is uh, platelet count, coagulation profile, and renal function using uh, urine uh, uh, protein or urine protein creatinine uh, ratio. And uh, there are also side effects that could be related to the uh, procedure uh, to give the uh, treatment. Again, I'm not going to go over the details. It's just, this is a slide, just to stress the same point about uh, the earlier you treat, uh, the better the response. And this is a, a, an outcome measure that's showing uh, an, a better response on the uh, top uh, graphs for uh, uh, patients who were treated at the pre-symptomatic pre stage. Uh, whereas the uh, lower graph, uh, where you see a lesser of improvement in those who were treated after uh, symptom uh, onset. So the real world data, there, is, there, is, there are several uh, studies and, 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 and some of them are larger and some are really uh, case, case uh, report uh, about uh, use of uh, nursing in the adult world. And, and I will, uh, Conclude that uh, based based on all that data, it seems that it is it's it's a safe treatment and and, and overall it's well tolerated. You still need to monitor for 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 side effects. Serious side effects were really uh, rare. Uh, there was an issue of need for intracecal delivery, and so in people who have a spinal fusion, there is need for alternative routes. And there is a lot of work you've heard earlier about the use of uh, subcutaneous. Uh, intrafetal catheter. Uh, some centers use transcominal CT guided approach. In our center, we use fluoroscopy guided uh, cervical uh, approach. And, and, and so, uh, and, 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 and still uh, data is being collected on those. I still feel that it's really 
uh, the, the expertise of the uh, personnel at the specific center where you're getting your treatment could be a deciding uh, factor. And then you will also hear about other, uh, the, 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 there is some uh, other uh, options. There is oral medications that are now uh, available. And, and so overall, it looks like there is uh, in, 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 in some of the patient uh, population, there is stabilization or, or clinically uh, meaningful uh, improvement. And, and, and it seems that there is better treatment response on those with milder uh, phenotype. We uncover that uh, people who have very severe disease, the outcome measures that are used uh, are, are, are of limited uh, use and they were not able to detect uh, change over, over time. The other medication that's approved for the adult is the uh, SMA, uh, is, is this diplom or FSD. It's a small molecule that also enhances splicing of the SMN2 to increase the uh, full length of the uh, full length uh, SMN protein. It's a liquid that's taken daily, approved uh, in August of 2020. Uh, so uh, three major things in terms of the side effects, uh, monitor for fever, the rear rash, infection, mouth ulcer, arthralgias, uh, some drug interaction, that drug that share uh, a pathway for metabolism called the MAID, and, and some of the commonly prescribed medications, some of the antidepressant, uh, uh, antidiabetic medication, some of the antibiotic. There is some interaction, but uh, uh, it needs just vigilance from the prescribing uh, physician and, 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 and the uh, primary care uh, physician in terms of uh, making sure that there is not going to be uh, uh, any uh, negative sequel. And usually what happens is the uh, levels of the other prescribed medications with uh, risk plan uh, tend to be higher. And so you can use uh, at least potentially the side effect. There's also potential effect on, 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 male, on male fertility and that has to be discussed. Um, so so uh, there, is, there is good safety data that's actually out there based on, 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 on the studies. There are uh, efficacy data uh, uh, so the, the sunfish uh, trial did include some adult patient and that was uh, type two and then ambulatory type uh, three patients who were able to sit independently and, and, and but the data is not teased by age. Uh, the overall uh, result of the data did show uh, an improvement in a measure uh, called the uh, MFM32. Uh, so uh, there is also another uh, study that's uh, called the Goldfish uh, trial, and, and that study is also uh, 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 used risk plan in SMA type two and, and three, but it did go in adults up to the age of sixty. It was an open label uh, trial, uh, mainly focusing on safety, uh, tolerability. It also looked at uh, efficacy. Uh, primary outcome measures were mostly uh, safety related, and, and some of that data was uh, shared uh, in form of abstract in recent meetings. Uh, you could see that the study uh, enrolled uh, 174 uh, patients uh, with SMA. 63 of those patients were age 18 or more. The majority of the patients uh, are non sitters and, and, and sitters, and uh, only 16. Uh, we're, we're able to, to walk. Uh, that uh, tend to be a little bit more uh, skewed towards the severe patient population. It is 3% of the uh, patients have uh, scoliosis and, and more than 40 uh, degree in almost 40% uh, of the uh, patients. And so as a biomarker, uh, the study looked at the SMN protein. Uh, the study obviously was for non uh, treatment naive patients. So it did allow patients who were in the Samaritan or uh, gene therapy to enroll. And, and it did show that there is an increase in the uh, SMN protein uh, to uh, two folds in, in all patients. Again, this data is not uh, teased or stratified out based on age. You've also heard about the, uh, uh, is there a better therapy? And, and again, that question comes a lot in the clinic. Uh, obviously, there is no head-to-head -head trials. Uh, data for adults is uh, mostly case series and real-world data. And again, there is no head-to-head -head, uh, uh, trials. And so 
decisions in the clinic are usually individualized based on, on uh, uh, treatment and based on, on, on route and based on the, on the data. And so we talk about uh, the different uh, options that are, are available and consensus decision is usually uh, made with, with, the, with the patient. Uh, so a couple of uh, points. Uh, so again, uh, the, the, the gene therapy, uh, which is replacement of the missing gene, the SMN1 gene using an AAV uh, vector. And, 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 and that, that's really the uh, on some gene of uh, epibarbate or, or zolginesma is only approved for uh, children under the age of two. And so that's not really for the adults at this uh, stage. The two SMN2 therapies, we talked about the risk plan and the uh, antisense, the mission nerves, you know, the antisense of vitamin Q type. So you've also heard again uh, earlier about the uh, myostatin uh, inhibitors use and, and uh, epitigrimab and some preliminary data showed a favorable safety uh, uh, profile and, 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 and a trend towards uh, uh, additive uh, improvement. Uh, it, was, it was used with Mr. Nursing because at the time of the original study, uh, the only drug that was approved was uh, uh, Mr. Nursing, but as you've seen in this question, there is, there is more uh, to come. Uh, so uh, one of the things we looked at is really another aspect of, of, of the disease is how the nerve and the muscle are talking to each other. And that's at the nerve and muscle junction. There's a lot of data uh, in the past that showed there is trouble with the neuromuscular junction and the neuromuscular junction transmission is, is defective. Uh, uh, we, did, we did see that in our uh, cohort. And, 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 and we've seen that uh, with, with Mr. Nersen, that uh, uh, defect in the neuromuscular junction transmission is not necessarily uh, corrected with the uh, Mr. Nersen. That's really provides another area for, for uh, uh, potential uh, added, added therapy. So, um, I, um, I, uh, so I, I, on my last slide, I will just leave you with few take home uh, points uh, that uh, always uh, play an, an active role in terms of your, your, your care. Uh, uh, ask questions and, and, and uh, learn about, about the options that you, you, you have. The FDA approved two uh, disease modifying therapy or gene modifying therapies for adults with spinal muscular atrophy. Uh, that's the nursing nursing and the risk of plan. Uh, multidisciplinary care is really uh, crucial. Uh, the, the standard of care documents are valuable, but they need, uh, with the changes in, in the field and the landscape, uh, they need uh, revision and, and people in the field are working on, on getting those revised on, on, regular, on regular basis. There are definitely areas of unmet need in the care model, in particular for the adult uh, SMA uh, population. And that's really a main reason for us to continue uh, together to address uh, those and, and, and encourage uh, you and, 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 and uh, uh, to, to be involved and to, be, to participate in uh, the different research uh, trials so we can be able to provide a better informed uh, help you to make better informed decisions in the uh, clinic. And this is my last slide and I thank you. Thank you, Dr. El Sheikh, for sharing the importance of the multidisciplinary care team approach and assessing disease progression and, and really touching on treatment as well as combination therapy. Um, I don't see any questions yet in the Q&A um, or the chat, but if you have any, um, we do welcome them. So please um, chat in any questions you may have. <laughs> we have a quiet audience, it looks like.
Yeah, some of the uh, data that Kirsten mentioned earlier would be really very interesting to think about that in the, in the, in the clinic. And so, for instance, uh, the, the, the data, the paper by uh, Arthur Berg, it's on the combination therapy uh, that's essentially using uh, two as uh, restoring uh, restoring therapy and, and, and essentially similar to having uh, mesomersin to the and so that's obviously going to be a, a challenge uh, clinically and, and both uh, logistically and 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 and, 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 and price wise, but it is actually also a good for mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It does look like we have a question. Um, okay. Someone is inquiring about adults on a breast D and and asking how they're doing um, specifically SMA type three. So I, I, I my, so uh, as this is really good point. Uh, so again, the data is really very limited. The jewelfish data uh, data that was shared out is mainly uh, the safety and the efficacy. And so there was the safety data. So no efficacy data was really yet out there. But it seems from 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 meetings that it looks like just looking at the raw data that there is some stabilization that you do you do see in in in, in my personal experience in our center uh, we have close to 20 uh, um, uh, adults who are on the on the on the uh, nurse nurse and maybe around 30, uh, on the risk plan and 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 most of them are really in the in the six months period that there is period and so still I, I, I don't have any, any uh, uh, definite answer at this, at this stage based on, the, based on the data. But again, the decision to be on those, on those treatments, that's really what's happened when we've had the uh, trial, uh, approved at the start back in, in 2016. We did not have any adult data and we had to extrapolate from the uh, pediatric uh, data. And, and so uh, with, that, with that in mind, instead of the stabilization of some improvement is probably so. Great, thank you for that. Um, any other questions? Yeah, one of the things is really, if, if I want to underscore one thing on this talk, is how important it is to take uh, um, in consideration the other aspect of care. And so the medicine is only a small portion of the overall picture. And so you still have to uh, uh, look into the other complications, make sure that somebody doesn't put on a major uh, weight uh, exercise on a regular basis and so on and so forth, because those are the things that could really result in some functional decline and kind of negate any uh, gains that someone might get from the uh, uh, treatment. Thank you so very much. And, Thank you for highlighting that point. Well, it looks like that's all we have for this afternoon in terms of Q&A, um, but thank you again for being with us today, Dr. El Sheik, and for all that you do for our neuromuscular disease community. Um, we appreciate your insight and, and thank you again. Thank you. This concludes our symposium for today. I want to thank all of our presenters for their time, as well as our event supporters, Genentech and Biogen. And thank you to you all for taking the time to join us today.